Good evening, everyone. Dan Gabriel here with a nightcap on today's events. Um, we heard earlier from Wynn, who gave a great update on the cruisers and the big boats as they're coming to a finish up at the top end of the lake, and also gave a nice forecast report. Uh, I'm going to key in more on the trophy, trophy division and see where they stand. So as you can see on the screen, most of the boats are getting up to Point Betsy now, and uh, they're stretching back to Manistee. But let's quickly take them back to when we left them last, which was about noontime. See how they progress up the lake here. So what we were projecting is that the, the guys in the middle were, were finding good enough winds that staying put in the middle and sailing less distance was good for them. And so I think and throughout the day we, we see that that's true. Um, let's pause it here and uh, close down a class or two. So we'll just go with J105. So these guys measure boat for boat speed equals um, 6.0 knots in the middle, 6.8. Let's go west. 8.2, 8.3, They definitely found what they were looking for on the west side of the lake. They they went over there and for pressure, I'm I'm assuming, and and they found it. Uh, the problem is at this point in the race, they they haven't been able to make up for the extra 10 to 15 miles they've sailed uh, over the guys that are on the rum line or even to the to the right side of the course. Um, the guys on the right, unfortunately, have found I think just slower speeds in general. Uh, they've been driving back and forth along the coast, trying to stay in touch with the with the land and getting whatever benefit the land throws at them. I guess today, unfortunately for them, it just wasn't there, uh, at least yet. So we'll keep playing this forward, and uh, as I get closer to the Manitous, we'll see what the uh, how this race is really going to shape up. So th as this day has gone on, the, the guys in the middle really seem to have the benefit of, uh, of winning the day. Uh, however... There's some interesting stuff that's going to happen tonight, I think, and we'll see how this progresses. And we'll pull it a little illustration to see how the guys on the west side might be set up to, to do some good stuff. So here we are real time and on the onset of deciding whether or not to go around the Manitous. So we've got the guys on the inside who've kind of played the rum liner close to it the whole way up. Uh, these familiar names, Karma, Buzz, here's Johnny. They've been on the rum or in the middle all day, and if, if I were to guess, they're going to continue that way. Um, but let's do a little illustration for the guys that are, that are out here that kind of position themselves to be, to be west and potentially have a straight track going around the Manitous. So let's test this out. We've got a little measuring tool. We'll pull this out and just uh, grab this white boat here. Um, it doesn't necessarily matter who it is since I'm just not trying to guide them anywhere. I'm just trying to a point. So let's just pick a point up here around uh, Beaver Island. They got about 60 miles straight line to get there. Um, let's do the same. So remember 60 miles. <laughs> if we uh, if we go here and go outside the Manitous, we're going to have to add up these points here. 40 miles and 25. So that's 65 miles. So they'd sail an extra 5 miles to go out and around at the point where they are. But let's take a look over here for these guys that are set up to the west. So this gray boat here, if they go inside, they're going to go 25, roughly 65 miles if they go inside. These are rough numbers. I understand that's not an exact science, but we're just trying to say that another 35 plus 30 is 65. So they've got 65 miles either way to get to that point up by Beaver Island uh, if they go inside or outside. And if they believe in the forecast, I think it's real obvious that there's some boats that are going to be going outside the uh, outside the Manitous. And if that forecast comes through, that could be real good for them. Uh, if you remember that the, the gray boat has 65 miles and the white boat has 60, that's a difference of five miles. Over a 65 mile span, it only takes about a knot of boat differential speed to make up those five miles. So it could be interesting. It could be that the west boats do pay here, if, especially if some boats go to, go to bed inside the Manitous, which we've been seeing with the boats that have passed through here previously. Uh, so it'll get real interesting. We'll see what happens over the night. Good luck to everyone. It'll be interesting to see what happens when we wake up in the morning. Have a great night.